So Daniel's speech uh, is just over. Um, first, we have to say uh, it was your personal opinion, not Novaramas or Sony's opinion. And basically, maybe the main message is that uh, uh, apps are not the future, the business model. Uh, well, uh, and to me, the, the key thing here to think about is comparing different business models and try to see where each one of those business models is going to take this industry in the future. And so I think that to generate the kind of en en entertainment that people are used to and that they, des they, they desire, the app model does not sustain uh, an analysis as to saying, can we make a, su a successful industry by just charging you know, something like one euro per app. I think it's very unlikely that that is going to allow games like Skyrim or games like Uncharted or games like Invisionals, for example, to be made in the future. Not because uh, of the uh, amount of money you're charging per app, but basically because of the fact that in the end you need a too huge audience to basically recover the costs of such a game. And so in my talk, what I was basically doing is comparing different models, like you know your typical retail model, your typical free-to-play model, your typical DLC model, and telling people which ones I do believe personally that make more sense in terms of doing the kind of games that Novorama has been well known to do. So maybe if you want to do really bite-sized entertainment, apps could be the way to go. But my point is, I don't think the audience at large wants that. I think there's a huge audience of gamers who really desire experiences that are too expensive to cover just on something like 0.79 per app. And that's like, uh, give me 500 uh, angry, uh, angry, angry Birds. Yeah, because in a way, I mean, what I did was basically do some basic statistics on games like Invisimals, for example, and it reached a conclusion that in this industry, we generate around 500 games a year which generate enough revenue to be similar to Invisimals. And so what I'm saying there is there should be an equivalent to that in the app market. So there should be 500 apps out there which are really, you know, quite successful. And that's not the case. I mean, when you see apps being successful, basically you're not seeing the rule, you're seeing the exceptions, such as Angry Birds, Cut the Rope, or two or three more. But really, there's not a healthy industry of companies making a living out of those apps. And it's a shame because lots of studios are going to believe all that hype surrounding apps, and most likely they're going to be broken hearts in the future, in two or three years, when they realize that their business model was not sustainable. So getting back to Novarama and, and PlayStation thing, uh, same event last year. You announced uh, you were you became first party studio for Sony. Uh, how has has it been during this this year? Well, basically just a change in the amount of resources you have for the studio. I mean, in terms of the teamwork, in terms of the relationship, nothing has changed. It's more that we have more visibility of strategy of the company at large and that's good because it allows us to do better games a side effect for that is that we didn't show any game this year because basically we're doing something which is way bigger which is something that has become possible because we are exclusive and that we will be showing in the future but it's not the day today to show that i mean today was a day just basically to meet with other developers and tell them hey here are some business models here's how they compare to each other uh, but really in terms of novorama the company is really going strong we will be nine years old next week so i'm really happy for that uh, and we are again happy thank you so much so and, and we are going strong by applying very basic common sense in terms of the business model. Because as I said today, technology changes, business model does not. The business models don't change as rapidly as we would like to think sometimes. But what you did show was uh, Reality Fighters yes. some months ago. It was a launch game yes. and it was uh, really crazy. Yeah. Uh, you could build your character, yes. you could use uh, any environment you wanted mm -hmm. due to uh, augmented reality. Which is the, the craziest thing you've seen or you've tried with the game? Uh, politicians, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, people doing politicians fighting each other, such as the Spanish president fighting Angela Merkel. Uh, <laughs> I've seen that and it works and it's fun. Uh, you know, I mean, what, when, what, when we did Reality Fighters, really what we wanted to do is give a good reason to show, you, to show your mates your PlayStation Vita. 
I mean, when you have a new console, basically you want to have that game that you show and say, hey, look at this cool stuff I can do with my new console. That's what Reality Fighters was all about. It was basically a game to show off the features of the hardware and say, hey, look at what we can do with PS Vita that we could never uh, have done before. Of course, in the future, we will try to keep the same wow factor so that when you see the next Norama game, uh, you know, you think again, wow, they've done it again. I'm surprised this is new. You explained last year that it was uh, something like a technical achievement, uh, 60 frames per second, yes. augmented reality and, and all the things, yes. and, and for a launch game. Is that something that you're uh, pursuing with every, every uh, new game? No, I mean, every game is different. I mean, for example, when we did Invisible 1, people said, hey, Noborama only does games for kids. And I said, no, 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 it's just this game. For Reality Fighters, you could say, hey, they only do 60 frames uh, per second games. No, it's not that. I mean, every game is different. If you think about it, we've been going for nine years, so we get bored of doing uh, the same all the time. So for us, changing subjects and changing themes and features of the game, it's actually good because uh, for us, it's more fun as a job. I mean, I've always said, I would love to do a game based on Barbie, you know, the Barbie dolls, you know, I would love to do that. I would love to do a survival horror sometimes. The problem is, of course, you have limited resources in terms of your manpower, and you can only uh, put, do some things. But you know, for us as a company, I mean, I, w I wish every game was totally different from the previous one because it would be more fun. But if we are talking about the same things, uh, what can we expect of Invisimals on PS Vita? Invisimals on PS Vita has not been announced and it's not real yet. It's, it's not. <laughs> you, you were trying like a uh, some racing ideas uh, for a racing game uh, before uh, Reality Fighters. Yeah. What you came up uh, about? I mean, we that we time uh, at Novrama we put out a lot of ideas. We throw away most of them, and you would be amazed of how many stupid things we try at the studio before we we said, "Hey, that's a good one." I mean, uh, for Reality Fighters, there were six ideas floating around in the studio. And you can imagine that now it's even worse, you know? So, I mean, we try a lot of things and we pick up what's best, you know? And so I hope in the near future we can talk about that, but definitely it's not the day today. Okay, looking forward to future uh, projects. And yes, uh, you know, from now on you're uh, w one of the defenders of the traditional gaming model. So I, I think a lot of uh, fans will, will follow your, your model and your philosophy from now on. Uh, if fans believe that I'm a good representative of the traditional business model, I'm really honored to be such a person. You know, I think it makes sense to respect the entertainment of people and to make people understand that your leisure time is something really precious. So sometimes you don't want something average, you want something amazing. And amazing things cost money to do. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.